Yep, I know. It's uh, it's been, it's been forever. I was going through some stuff, and I'm here to get the ball rolling. Also, I apologize if I sound groggy. I am just coming out of a sickness or a cold. But anyway, I am here to bring you a video of challenges to spice up your TTRPG game. Just like every other video, you already know, I got timestamps in the description down below. So, let's go. So the first challenge I'm going to give you guys, to this goes out to my min-maxers, my optimizers. And albeit that's actually a very valid way of having fun in the game. I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to harp you for that. But I do challenge you on this. Play a suboptimal character. Try out a build that is really really bad. If you're playing Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder, you could use this standard array. 14, 12, 10, 8, 5, and 3 to apply to your ability scores. Now, I know that's really bad, but uh, I highly recommend you try it and give it a shot. So, see if you can do it. If it's not your style, no worries. Alright, the second one is adding injuries to your game. Now, I know some of them have optional rules, like D&D has a base optional rule for injury, and they suck. They are complete poop. Cyberpunk Red is another game system that has injuries in them, and I've played in it, and it's, it adds to the grittiness. It really, really does. It's important. But if you're going to add it to Pathfinder, I, I don't know if it's in Pathfinder. I'm learning it, and when I looked it up, it was like... I couldn't tell if it was homebrew or not. I, I don't know. I'm so new to Pathfinder that I can't tell. But there's a few websites out there that have lingering injuries that you can add to your Dungeons and Dragons game. And I'll link that down below as well. And you can adjust the level severity as you go. But what this does is it also allows opportunity to roleplay vulnerability and hardship. When your characters get their noggins rocked, it's going to be pretty cool to see how tightly knit your campaign or your party is going to be. Uh, when they get uh, tossed around a little bit in the, in the meat grinder. But I will say with a little bit of a disclaimer here, or a little bit of a warning, have a session zero, again, just talk to your players about it, because it, adding this might change the expectations of a certain type of game. So you really need to make sure, if you're starting a new game, great, but if you're going to add this to an existing game, definitely have that conversation about boundaries and expectations within the game, okay? It's very important you do that. All right, so for the third challenge, I suggest you guys try to be a co-game master with whatever kind of game system you are running. I know the common ones that I've been playing recently or learning to play is Cyberpunk and Pathfinder, but I've learned a lot of things through Dungeons and Dragons over the 10 years of playing that uh, can be quite stressful for the game masters. And um, a lot of them can experience a lot of dissonance and disconnect because all the players get to talk about their cool little things and stories and the game master feels as though they can't because of potential spoilers. To say to that, you absolutely can have that conversation with your players, but as a thing that you players can do is cycle amongst people who gets turns to play as the co Dungeon Master. It'll be really fun, and it's also going to be a sign of appreciation for your Game Master. It's a little bit of a load off as well. It's a pretty hard challenge, and it's pretty daunting, but uh, if, you can, if you think you got it, give it a shot. Alright, the fourth challenge, this one's a bit silly. Uh, <laughs> just, like, play a monster. Like an enemy. Like, if you go through the monster manual for Dungeons & Dragons, just pick a skeleton, or a carry-on crawler that's achieved super sentience. I do like the idea of a skeleton who's just absolutely sick of the vampire or lich's crap. <laughs> it's just like, screw this, forget it. I'm gonna go with the parties. And uh, there's no class features, you don't apply class features to it uh, because the monster stat blocks and the player stat blocks are asymmetrical for a reason. So just like level up the monster player by like health and damage, maybe a few feats in there and have that discussion so it's not too overpowered. I don't know, give it a shot, see what happens. May might make the story a lot of fun. Alright, the fifth challenge is just flat out stupid. It makes literally no sense to do. You're pretty much just going to be attacking with improvised weapons. A stool, the floor, a table, I don't know, but basically any object that isn't technically a weapon is now your weapon. And you fight with that weapon throughout the entire campaign, or as long as you can at least until you go down. I know Cyberpunk Red has got some pretty cool things in there where you can uh, make some melee weapon attacks with just random objects you pick up, so that's pretty fun. I don't know if they have it in Pathfinder. Again, when looking it up, it's kind of hard to find. I don't have the Pathfinder books yet. I just did a lot of Googling and I got really confused. So I'm still learning Pathfinder. But yeah, just pick up random objects and see how well your character does. Just make a paladin class that smites with tables and chairs. Anyway, that's pretty much all I got. This is a pretty sweet, short, simple video that I wanted to give you guys, get the ball rolling and uh, kind of get in touch with my community again if my lovely 400 plus subscribers are still kicking around. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
like, thumbs up, subscribe, you know the drill. Anyway, later.